Hi, I'm Darren Goulder and these are my five top tips for spring tench. Um, I've caught one this morning on a maggot feeder and if you follow my tips you'll be able to hopefully employ them in your fishing and catch one like this. The most important part to any tent session is locating the fish first. When I arrive I often have one or two laps of the lake to see if I can see any fish showing. Um, tents like roll, they fizz, um, they porpoise out in the water so it's, a good, it's, it's, it's important to have a good look and see if you can find any signs of visible fish first. Um, once you have found the fish then I, I would set up in the swim, uh, bring my kit round and then have a good scan of the water and see, have a look where they are showing. And um, even though there's islands dotted around and all that sort of stuff, the real features are underwater. And that's when it's important to use a marker rod to show where the gravel bars are and the other features. Um, with this particular rod, which is the new tribal carp marker rod, uh, it's 12 foot and it's got a stiffer tip, so it really exaggerates any gravel bars that you're pulling through. You can feel the weed a lot more than you would with just a regular tip. Um, I've got a spod, I've got a Shimano spod reel there, the Airlex, teamed up with 30 pound uh, Super Slick Power Pro, and, and that braid has no stretch, so when you cast out and you pull the rod back, you'll be able to feel the smooth silt, you'll be able to feel the tap, tap, tap on the rod tip when you're pulling it over gravel, and when you do feel a spot, um, let, the, let the clutch off, let out, pay out the line and then you can find the depth. So you'll be able to find out when you're at the back of the bar and say it's 10 foot of water, pull it up a little bit more and you'll get to the top of the bar and then you pull it a bit further and then you come back down the bar and it's in front of the bars and behind them where I like to target, just in that silt where it meets the gravel. You find on these lakes that when there's a prevailing wind, the food often gets washed on either side of it. So for instance here we've got a wind coming across the swim. So I'm targeting the areas just down the back and at the front of the slopes where I'm thinking the food's going to collect. Um, uh, you've got all the islands but you've also got the gravel bars that are running interlinked. So it's, it's always worth to give it a real big chuck and just find out where they are first and then go from there. When you have found your spots uh, clip the line up under the, one of the line clips and then I like to walk, these, walk it out along the bank and then walk my rigs out and clip them up to the same distance and that now I know when I'm fishing, I'm in fishing as accurate as I possibly can on the hot spots. When tench fishing on gravel pits in the spring, I use a more stepped up approach to my tackle to combat the large carp, gravel bars and other snags that inhabit these lakes. I'm using the purest branch rods, uh, which I had some input into designing, which are 12 foot, 12 foot 6, a pound and three quarter, and are powerful enough to cast big method feeders a long range and also uh, deal with row carp that you often catch when you're tent fishing. Um, these particular rods I've landed carp to 38 pounds on, which when you're using uh, lighter lines and all that sort of stuff, you need powerful rods to be able to stop them getting away from the snags, otherwise they're going to break you off all the time. I like to pair the rods with a 10,000 size Shimano bait runner, which holds a lot of strong line. Um, the line I'm actually using today is the new Shimano tribal carp line in 10 pounds. I find that it sinks well, um, it's got good stretch, but it's very abrasion resistant, which you need when you're fishing over the top, top of sharp gravel bars and you're picking up a lot of big carp. And now let's have a look at the rigs on the business end of the setup. Once you've found your spot and located the features, it's then a key of feeding them. When I arrive, I clip my rods up, I also clip up a spod rod, um, and then I go about laying down a dining table for the rest of the trip. Most of my trips are normally 24 to 48 hours, sometimes more, um, but what the key is, is to lay a big bed of bait down before I start, and then cast the feeders over the top. 
Uh, when I arrive, I'll usually put out a whole jar of the dynamite mixed particles. There's small bits in there, there's hemp, there's all sorts of oils and stuff, which is super attractive and the tench love it. So that's the main bulk of it really, a whole jar of one of them. And then we've got uh, a few krill pellets. Uh, that's the ground bait. I've got a few krill pellets in there, just as bigger morsels. They break down over a sort of a slow period, giving off bits and, you know, all sorts of attractions through the water column. So I have a handful of them, not too many. I don't like to spoil them too much. And a little bit of ground bait just to stodge it up. If I'm using it in a spod, uh, I don't like it falling out the back, so I just put in a bit of that just to stiffen it up, stop it falling out on the cast. Or if I'm using a spom, then I won't put any ground bait in it at all. I'll just use the pellets and the particle. Uh, well, you, you pop your marker rod up and then I'll put out a big bucket. I'll mix it all up in a big bucket. You'll have your spot on the dis in the distance that you want to be cast into. And then it's just a case of getting it out there as accurately as you possibly can. Uh, I use the tribal spod rod and the spod, the, the, the airleg spod reel. And the key is to get it as close as you possibly can to the marker float, ideally in a sort of a four foot radius around the float, because then when you're fishing your, uh, your maggot feeders over the top, you want it in that vicinity. You don't want to be spreading bait all around the swim. Uh, so I go about doing all that big disturbance at the start of the trip, get most of the bait out there, and then I'll be going about um, just topping it up as I progress through the swim. So I won't give it another, well, unless they're really feeling hard, then I'll give it a big hit of bait. But most of the time I'll be using a, a small spom or one of the small corder spods. Um, first thing in the morning when I wake up, so say for instance, four o'clock in the morning, quickly put out half a dozen spods over each spot and then cast the feeders out. And then I know that there's a little bit of attraction down there, but the real attraction is in the feeder, which I'll show you shortly, and feeder in the maggots that go into it. Um, and also topping up the swim once you have fish. So if you wake up, you put a half a dozen spots out, uh, you catch a few fish, it's no good not putting any more spot out because the fish will eat everything and they'll move off. So, you know, they don't make any disturbance. So it's just important to have them all clipped up and, and ready with your spots on the distance. So if you've had a few fish, top it up and then you'll catch a few more and top it up and just keep on playing it by ear. And hopefully you'll have some success like we've had on this trip. Tench absolutely love red maggots. Maggots play a massive approach when I'm tench fishing and 95% of it always involves the use of a swim feeder. Um, tench are inquisitive so they're always homing in on the attraction of casting out regularly. So I use an assortment of different block end feeders, open end feeders of different sizes um, to, to, to introduce the maggots into the swim. Um, I use scaled down carp rigs for tench. Um, so they're, they're bolt rigs, I'm often using more than one rod at a time, so I can leave them out there for long periods of time on the bite alarms, ready for a bite. Um, I use um, an unleaded sort of lead cord, one of the new leaders, which is safe for fish, um, direct to the feeder and incorporate a small helicopter rig, which is tangle free and offers good uh, bite indication. Um, at the moment, uh, there's a little bit of silt out there, there's a little bit of silkweed. So what I'm actually doing is fishing my maggots popped up straight from the deck. Um, I'm using a very short hook link, which is probably about three and a half inches, and that sits um, just off the bottom over any weed, and the tench, absolutely, they love it. They come in on it, and I'm using a little sliver of red foam there, just hair rigged, and then I nick a couple of real real maggots onto the hook and then that just sits proud and all the maggots crawl out of the feeder you know, with a nice little ball of attraction um, for them to home in on. Uh, I actually feed, um, put some liquid flavouring into the feeder before I cast out just for some extra attraction. Um, as you can see on these feeders, some of them are taped up, other ones aren't and that just controls the rate that the maggots crawl out. Um, sometimes I'm casting every 45 minutes, other times every hour. Sometimes I want to leave them out there a little bit longer uh, for up to two hours or so. So taping them up slows that release and just makes, makes it more attractive for longer because I find that an, an empty feeder 
isn't really attractive, you might as well be using a lead. So to always have a constant stream of bait coming around to your hook bait is going to get um, going to get extra bites. Um, but tench can be quite, um, they are quite rig shy as well. So, you know, sometimes that can be a little bit too obvious, fishing them pop straight up. So when I'm fishing over clearer silt or the back of gravel bars, I'll be using uh, a sinking bait fished on the bottom and I'll be using um, a couple of rubber casters which will sit on the bottom uh, with a supple uh, braided hook link. Um, I'm using here size 12, uh, size 12 hooks, um, 15 pound coated braid with elements of it stripped back to, to make it supple and a stiff bit just above the, the swivel to stop it from tangling. So it's got a bit of rigidity there to stop it from twisting up the leader. And that's the same, of, same again with that. That's a soft, supple hook link, but that's a little bit longer as well, because when I'm fishing them on the bottom, I make it just long enough so that it sits just past the feeder. And then it's not too long, but it's always going to be in, in the vicinity of, uh, of a feeding fish homing in the maggots. Um, and that's it, it's, it's all straightforward. Um, if, I, if I find that you know they're not coming in on the feeders and that, I can try leads and PVA bags of casters and all that sort of thing, but I find the number one thing for tension is recasting regularly with plenty of red maggots. So hopefully now you've found the features in the swim, you've found the fish, you've baited up and you know what rigs to use. So now I suppose it's just a little bit about tactics and what you can expect when you are tent fishing on these gravel pits. Uh, unlike estate lakes, where I suppose that, you know, first light, dawn, um, where you're float fishing uh, in the margins with lily pads and all that sort of thing, you can ex expect bites, you know, first thing, and then it towers off by lunchtime. But on these gravel pits, these big windswept pits, it's normally a different kettle of fish. Um, I set my alarm for 4am for when it's getting light, have a look, see if there's any fish rolling, top up, the, top up the swims with a little bit of bait, recast all the rods, especially when you're using maggots, um, put a fresh payload out on each rod, and then sit back with a cup of tea, and you can often expect a run, you know, if you haven't already, like, you know, the best alarm clock is one of the bite alarms going out, and to catch a nice fish is a perfect start to the day. Uh, and then it can go quiet for a little bit, um, you know, seven o'clock in the morning till, till 10 o'clock, sort of, you know, into mid-morning can be good times, more later on in the, in the spring, like we're in June now, but we're a little bit behind. So, you know, the fish are feeding at all times of the day. Uh, lunchtime's a, a good productive time. You know, one, two o'clock, you can expect a couple of bites. So it's important to make sure that you top up them swims in between bites so that there's some food out there for the next time they're gonna be hungry. Um, and late afternoon, you know, the, I'm always recasting the feeders anyway. I tend to inquisitive, they home in on it. You can always pick up a bonus fish, but you also know through fishing these long 24, 48 hour sessions when, when they're feeding, when the feeding spells are, and to make sure you're organized and equipped for, for, them, for those you know, hot times. Um, and often, like I mean, you can also, when the sun, you know, later on in these hot days, when it's just cooling off in the evening, the winds, you know, just dying off and the sun goes behind those trees in the distance, that's also a really good time. It's good for watching the fish. And it's also good for looking out for fizzers, casting to opportunists, to opportunists, you know, if, if a chance comes about, you can just put a little PVA bag out there and catch it. But often, you know, you've been working your spots, there's a dinner table down there, and they'll come and visit them at all times during the day. Um, so just make sure you're prepared for when it happens. Um, and if you employ some of the tips and tricks that we've covered today, hopefully you'll have some success when you go out this spring too. So be lucky.